If you have back, neck, or limb pain or suffer from balance deficits, if you're about to have or recently had surgery, you already know you need physical therapy. But where do you go? Should you leave your rehab decisions to others or should you make your own informed decision? You have a right to choose the best place for your physical therapy. Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy is offering free consultations so you can compare what they have to offer with the rest. Before you get that total knee, hip, or shoulder replacement, before you choose where to go, get the facts. Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy is located in North Cape May. They provide a warm, fun social atmosphere with no session time limits. Most insurances are accepted. For an appointment in Cape May, call 884-9800. That's 884-9800 because it truly matters where to go for your physical therapy. They're simply the best. That's 884-9800. 884-9800. I'm Bob, and this here is my place. You're going to get some opinions. I'm Bob. Would you knock me out, please? Mixed in with a little news, the latest weather, some sports, and maybe even a little reminiscing. About a song from 1962. And you're almost guaranteed to hear something that's going to make you smile. Bob, we love playing here tonight. But if you're not careful, you might even learn a thing or two. Very interesting. Live from the studios of Longport Media, it's time for Bob Burns in your afternoon. We'll, uh, we'll talk to Bob. And now, here's Bob. All right, we're back. It's Thursday. I didn't give out the time yet once today. And it is 3.08 p.m., and we're here with Dr. Mitchell Hackerman. He's from uh, you get Pro PT and Rehab. The thing is, is a lot of the uh, a lot of big corporations and physicians have been bought bought you know bought out, and they become employees of big corporations. So it's a little harder to know whether you're being referred because the person they want you to go to uh, is really you know that good, or it's, or are they being referred because there's some monetary gain, or if they're being referred. You know, they they have some ownership. Uh-huh. So there's a thing. It's not like the old days, you know. But fortunately, we have a lot of great physicians and uh, who really do care about their patients. And uh, those are the ones I'm relying on. They're the ones who actually uh, refer to me because they know they get feedback from their patients. Right. And they see how I'm treating them. And, of course, uh, you know, we have direct access. We can see people off the street these days. Only you know, There's not a lot of insurance companies, though, which will uh, reimburse unless you get a prescription. Uh-huh. But I do free consultation, so if someone comes into the office and wants to find out what I'm all about, how we treat patients, they can do that. And invariably, when they do, they usually, they usually come to us. What if somebody just wanted to come to you? Uh, that's happened. I mean, if you go to on my website at proptrehab.com on the testimonials page, uh-huh. uh, you can see a classic example of a situation in which the guy had to... was. If I didn't see him, I honestly don't think he would have, um, you know, uh, had the success he did. And the reason is, is because he had lifted up a two by four and experienced something called an acute lateral shift. Uh-huh. And theoretically, what happens is uh, you suffer a severe disc bulge where the fluid hydration is on one side of the disc and it sets your body off it. You're shifted. Uh-huh. Now, when he first came in, I didn't have a, any kind of camera with me, so I couldn't take a picture of the first day. But I have, a, I have a day two picture after I've treated him, and the day two picture still shows a significant shift. It's just not as bad as it was day one. I wish I had that picture. Right. But within three sessions, I was able to normalize him completely. Now, if he had to go through the normal route, go get an appointment with his primary care physician, how long that would take is questionable. Right. Then, the, then you have to hope that the primary care physician will send him to me, or if they're just going to go through the normal, their, if they have a normal procedure of sending them over to uh, the orthopedic or to uh, for diagnostic studies, all these things, you know, I really don't need the diagnostic study to treat something like that. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of the studies, if you look at the research, a lot of what they found find on diagnostic films have already been shown through research to not necessarily be correlated with one's problem. I've even treated people in the past where you look at their films and they're really bad. I mean, it's like they've got bony spurs everywhere, they've got stenosis, they've got all kinds of problems with them. And this one person, while uh, certainly it's optimal for somebody to you know move their joints and to try to move optimally, and uh, that 
there have been these uh, people who've had these problems on film and they've never had a history of back pain, for example. Uh -huh. Never. And I've had a patient that actually heard me on a radio show many years ago and came to see me. And um, I found that he most likely had blood clots in his calves, and that, sure enough, that's what it was. Wow. But his x-rays were terrible. <laughs> yeah. But he's never had back pain in his life, and he was happy, and he was fine. But um, just because he doesn't have pain, I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to doing things that will maximize his function, ability to move. Sure, and, yeah. Because you, know, you can theoretically be predisposed to injury if you don't get those joints moving the right way. But when you have a, a symptom or a pain symptom, it's not always specifically correlated with those uh -huh. uh, diagnostic findings. Well, when you said that so, the gentleman had a lateral shift, what does that mean? Uh, his body, his right, sh say, look at, uh, imagine in your mind's eye, your right shoulder shifted all the way to the right, and uh -huh. your left pelvis shifted all the way to the left, okay? Oh, okay. All right. I got you. But, and a really severe... <laughs> Like and almost anything he would have done would have blown that disc, and you know he would have, you know, who knows what happened at that point? They uh -huh. certainly would have had to do surgery. Now, just because he decided to bypass that traditional route, I was able to work with him. Right. And as I say, you can actually see the pictures on my testimonials page at proptrehab.com, uh -huh. um, and you can actually see uh, his uh, him normalize. Like after day two of treatment, you see him with just a minimal shift left. You know, you can see it yourself. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. And then on the last day, you can see he's got absolutely no shift. Uh, and uh, he, he's great and he's in good shape. Um, the thing is this also, I mean, I provide many methodologies. I, I have a plethora of treatment methodologies. I've been doing this for over 20 years. So uh -huh. I've been able to collect a lot of different techniques over the years to uh, work with somebody and uh, something doesn't work, I can try something else. You're a hands-on guy, right? I'm a hands-on guy, absolutely, but not always if I have to, because there's some times where you don't want to put your hands on. You I, want them, I, I don't mean hands-on. I just mean you're, you're the guy doing the rehab. You're, of course. You're, you're, you're not just sitting in the office saying, go out there and rehab that guy. You're the guy that's out on the floor doing it. Oh, yeah, sure I am. Right. I mean, I, well, I'm a people person, so right. you see, there came a time in my life, my career, where I had to make a decision. Did I want to go work for your average corporation out there, who right. you know they're set up as a business, and uh, they sort of they basically have a certain time frame that you got to work with a patient, you get them in, and you get them out. Here we are attending all these fantastic seminars, learning all these great skills and everything, and you have to say, oh, man, Mr. So-and-so, I'm sorry we ran out of time, but you know what? Come back the next time, right. and uh, we can look at you a little further and see what else we find out. I don't need to do that. If you come into my office, I can spend as much time with you as I want. Right. And a tip, if, it, if it's a complex case, I'll spend a long time with you. Uh -huh. Until I'm satisfied that I know what's going on. If you're treatable through physical therapy, or if you're, or if I need to refer you back out for for something else. So, um, and also, yeah, you know, I get people come in for their lunch break for an hour, and it's like, well, that's all the time they have. I, I say, you know what? You got some time after work. Yeah. I'm still here. Come on in. You know, I can work with you some more. So I have that freedom and that luxury. Right. And I even have the luxury to sit there and have a nice little conversation with you about whatever you want to once I'm comfortable with your condition. Yeah. And the social atmosphere is part of the healing process. I see. Now, um, now the thing is, I, I have a, I just got a patient who had, she's had a history of pain. She's um, was diagnosed with the classic fibromyalgia. You know, there's a lot of debates about the uh, that syndrome, but she fits the classic example. She's got a lot of back pain, and you know. You know, when we advertise to people, we always talk about pain, pain, pain. Well, yeah, we would yeah. love to get you out of pain. That's our objective. But that's not the only objective because, let's face it, there are times when pain is not going to go away no matter what you do. And sometimes you can modulate it. So we have to focus on function. So this patient had come in. She could not get up and down off the floor. Could not. I, not just because of the pain. She was just complete. Her muscles just were not functioning as they were supposed to function. Uh -huh. I had to literally... Uh, place her onto the mat, and then I had to I had to lift her off of the mat. Right. Within just a couple of sessions, she was able to get up and down in, independently. And you say, well, how's that possible? Well, not everything we do is just to strengthen. It's to get theoretically get that my the brain communicating with the specific muscles that stabilize the spine and the pelvis. And get them functioning again because uh, they've done MRIs, for example, of multifidi muscles two years after an injury, and they've shown atrophy. Okay, well, why would they atrophy? Well, maybe from lack of use 
or maybe lack of proper use. Right. Now, people, uh, as we form as human beings, we go through a developmental sequence. We, uh, we're babies, we try to roll, we try to crawl, and then we work our way toward walking. And somewhere along the line, it could be a number of factors. Uh, it could be from our lifestyle. Maybe we sit all the time, have poor posture, to tissue shorten. Our part, you know, there's a number of potential factors to the, why these muscles stop activating. Maybe you just don't get up and down uh, that much. People right. don't realize, as you know, their lifestyle might be. I just don't get up and down very often. They don't even know they can't do it. Um, or pain. Now. Everything you do is mapped in the brain. Your brain is like a, has a program in it, your central nervous system. Right. And uh, when you lift an arm up, when you lift a leg up, these quote-unquote core muscles, I get tired of saying that term, though, because they're so overused, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, the multifidi, the transverse abdominis, the oblique muscles, all these muscles basically are supposed to contract before you even accomplish your task, even before your, your limb leaves your body. It's okay. a pre, pre-programmed uh, thing. So that way, you know, you're not going to lift and try to do something, mobility or skilled activity, over top of an unstable platform. Okay. And basically what they've shown is that when you have pain like this, that, that it could basically cause them to dysfunction. All right? So what did we have to do with this person? We had to take her back to rolling again. So we would isolate, do isolated rolling where we have her move her upper body and try to roll and not move the, the lower body or the legs and not offer any help from it right. and vice versa. We have to see where the weaknesses are or the problems are. Invariably, as I work with somebody, you start to notice that it becomes easier. Well, there's many reasons for that. Repetition, practice, uh, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Right. Okay, but getting those things activated, and now the brain theoretically is communicating. And notice I use the word theoretical a lot. I yeah. do that for a reason, because there's nothing conclusive in this world. <laughs> okay? It's like that ATM2 machine I have for back pain. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful machine for a lot of people. I've got a terrific explanation as to how, why it works. But in the end, I don't have to be 100% correct as long as I get the response I want. That's right, yeah. And I think too many people are espousing their theories as facts, and they're not facts, okay? Uh, let's get real here. <laughs> All right, so through some uh, movements that I did with this patient, she was then able to get up and down independently. She still has pain, though. Uh -huh. She still has, and so we're trying to uh, deal with that as well. But the thing is, is if she's able to function better, if she's able to move better and do things better, uh, and uh, that is a huge plus. And then and, and oftentimes, over time, uh, these people get to a point where they have notice, hey, you know what, I have less pain because they're not requiring uh, so much um, out of their muscles as they did before. Yeah. And you think about it, too. I mean, people attribute their weakness or their pain or whatever to weak muscles. Well, you know what, a lot of this can come from normal muscle or overused muscle, and they become uh, overused because they're trying to compensate for perhaps weak muscles that are not doing their job, uh -huh. okay? So these are all the things we, I basically take somebody through a movement pattern assessment, I see how they're moving, and uh, and what's really uh, fascinating to me is I, I've gotten some a lot of patients, whether it's back or neck or other, a person would come in, they said, well, I've had neck pain for this long, look at me, I can't move my head, all okay? Right. So a lot of practitioners, um, and probably perhaps all medical or rehab fields, uh, they, there, there can be a tendency to think that every problem needs the same hammer. What's that expression about the hammer and the nail? Yeah. Right? Well, the person comes in, can't turn their head, and they're in the standing. They say if the hammer's yeah. the only tool you have, it's yeah. the only thing you fix. <laughs> yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. So you try to fix the same thing. Now, this, these people, for example, have, had, have recently come into me with a neck issue, and they've had been manipulated over and over and over again. They said it just keeps coming back. Uh -huh. okay? Now, it could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they're just really bad with their posture. Maybe they're bad with body mechanics. Um, but nobody has checked to see how these muscles function in other positions, maybe gravity-eliminated positions, okay. where you're not having to fight gravity. And uh, interestingly enough, when we do certain things with them in a gravity-eliminated position, which may be lying down, <laughs> to make it simple, yeah. uh, you'll notice that they can get up and now move fully. 
Now, of course, this is not going to happen with everybody, but that exposes the difference between a mobility issue in the joint right. versus a stability or motor control issue. Okay. So why would they be able to all of a sudden move perfectly and I not lay a hand on them? Because it wasn't a mobility issue. The treatment of choice was not manipulation. If you manipulate a joint and you pop it, okay, it's going to feel... It could feel good, right. you know, because you're stimulating what are called type 3 mechanoreceptors, uh, inhibitor receptors, and that modulates pain, okay? Uh, whether it's the treatment you should have is, is in question, wow. okay? So if I can determine whether it's a motor control issue or stability issue, are the muscles stabilizing the spine properly versus a mobility issue where the joints truly need to be worked on to move, that makes the difference. So all this time they've been manipulating or mobilizing a, a joint that that was a what that wasn't the issue it wasn't a mobility issue it was a stability issue about that so um if you have a m true mobility issue it will show itself in either position right okay so now you have a reason to go ahead and do some joint procedures personally i like to move a joint through its range of mo normal range of motion uh, because while there's there are places for manipulation, um, moving a joint, like say you turn your head to the right and you can't move it very well, you're obstructed. Uh, if I can get that obstruction out of the way and you're pain free while the joint is in, in its normal state, to me that's preferable. And at times uh, I'll go ahead and do I'll work the thoracic spine as well because they're basically linked. Uh, and that can help things out. And wow. at times, m there's been some studies which showed manipulating the thoracic spine helps with neck movements. And by the way, before I get too far into this, I would like to <laughs> at least give you the phone number, N North Cape May. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. 609-884-9800. <laughs> right. 609. We were supposed to be coming out with a jingle soon, but there seems to be some controversy with people whether I should release it or not. Oh, because, really? Well, because it's kind of, it's a little comical, and uh -huh. you don't expect that from a... Oh my gosh! But I love it. <laughs> yeah, good, I love it. But good. But I like your. I, I see your TV ad, and that that one physician yeah. you have in a TV ad speaks very glowing of you. I have several. Well, I've got Dr. Jack Fasciola, chief of orthopedics, is giving me a testimonial, uh -huh. and I've got Dr. Uh, Suketa Nanavati, who's a cardiologist at Cape Heart Clinic and Cape May Courthouse. Right. They're giving me uh, uh, great uh, testimonials because. Um, I've treated a lot of Dr. Fasciola's patients, and he's noticed the difference. Remember I told you there's some good physicians out there who care about their patients, you right. know, and Dr. Nanavati. Um, so they were willing to do that, and I was really appreciative. Dr. Nanavati actually was a patient of mine. Uh -huh. He heard through his patients about me through word of mouth. As, you know, I build the practice that way primarily. Right. And uh, so he came and saw me, and, and he uh, got great results, and so he... So he was willing to do, you know, he had offered to do this. I also have testimonials on my website on the testimonial page from a David Rayfield, Dr. David Rayfield, who's a plastic surgeon. Um, he traveled an hour to see me, uh -huh. uh, be, and uh, it completely changed the direction of where he was going. And so he was willing to give me a testimonial. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of patient testimonials. That's so, terrific. So if you go to ProPTRehab.com on the testimonial page, you'll right. see a whole list of people. And I still have other people asking me to get on there, and uh -huh. I just haven't had the time to do that. I got the guy from Geis's Market. I mean, um, there's, a, there's a bunch of people I still have yet to put on there, but you look uh, I, I have only got so much time to do everything. I'm focusing on my patients is what yeah, I'm doing. That's, that's what you should do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. that's a tough problem to have. You have too many people who want to say nice things about you. No, right? that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a bad. kind of problem I like to have. I feel sure. bad for you, Doc. Sure. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> I, wanted, I, we, I, we, I wanted to talk a little bit about balance. Uh, sure. Balance is a big deal. Uh, well, it's a big deal as you get older because I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah. You well, know. there's many reasons why people have balance issues. It could be an inner ear issue. Uh -huh. uh, there's something called benign uh, proxismal uh, positional vertigo where you have these crystal formations that can uh, go into the uh, semicircular canals and that sort of throw off your balance. There's many reasons why somebody has a balance issue. Uh, neurologists will often uh, do uh, exams. They've got these special cameras. Uh, I know Dr. Fasciola has some... Um, uh, equipment in his uh, office that does uh, checks for these things, vertigo and things of that nature. Uh -huh. uh, but sometimes people just need to work on balance. And what's interesting is uh, I've treated people, a lot of people with balance issues, 
And the thing that I do differently is, first of all, um, an hour is just for a lot of these people, and as far as I'm concerned, just not enough time for a lot of them. Okay. I was working on a gentleman who had some balance issues, and he ended up going uh, visiting some uh, physician somewhere who he sees for his balance, and then they have some kind of balance clinic. They were wondering why I was doing certain exercises with him, and they were seem- seemingly thinking that it-, it was unrelated. Like, why am I doing these exercises? Right. And you know, why am I doing it? Okay, let's think about it. You know, people are people. They've got orthopedic conditions. They might uh-huh. have a kyphosis, which sends their center of gravity off. They might have uh, various postural issues. They may have maybe bone density issues. Maybe they have uh, muscle imbalance or flexibility issues. Well, you have to look at those things, yeah. and, and you treat them like anyone else because those are things that should be addressed. So what I do is I treat them uh, for, for posture and for uh, other, other things. And, then I, and, and in addition to that, we go ahead and we do the typical or traditional balance types of activities. One of the balance things I do, which is not typical because I'm treating a young girl right now who is getting therapy at her school, and her mother said that they haven't done this before, but I, I know she's getting good care where she's going because I know, like I talked to the person there, and they're doing a bunch of different things which are certainly appropriate. Uh, but what I was working with her are some uh, basic half kneel positional balance, getting into a half kneel position, right. high uh, tall kneeling positions, challenging those things. Things that I talked about earlier where the back patient, those core muscles were not functioning. Right. Well, it, it's a similar situation for this person. She didn't have a back issue, but she had uh, other uh, neurologic uh, issues going on. So um, just by doing that, they've even noticed some improved balance. So you have to really assess each person as an individual and see what their deficits are, not just say, okay, this is what you're here for. Right. I'm, like, And this is part of the issue, why I ended up with my own centers, is because if someone comes to me with a shoulder problem, for example, uh, at some facilities, they may require you just to focus on the shoulder. Right. Okay. Well, to me, if I'm going to focus on, if I'm going to treat someone's shoulder, I have to look at other areas. I have to look at their back, for example, or the thoracic spine. I have to look at other issues. They come to me for their low back. Maybe their ankle range of motion isn't good. Okay. You get golfers that come in. Right. They swing a golf club. They have pain. They may go get physical therapy somewhere. And for some reason, uh, they're happy because they got out of pain, but nobody discovered their poor ankle mobility or range of motion. <laughs> and so what are they going to do? They're going to go back to golf and re- recreate the whole mess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've done studies on runners, and they've shown that runners who have had a history of back pain, and they are running, and at the time they don't have back pain, and they compared them against groups of runners who've never had back pain, invariably the runners who've never had back pain are faster. So something's amiss there. Something's yeah. happening, which gives you a reason to work on these uh, core muscles. Um, <laughs> so, again... <laughs> it's, it's like a switch, Doc. What's that? It's like a switch. What's like a switch? I ask you a question, and, and boom. It's, you got, I, just, I just go off. <laughs> no, you, you, you do well. It's, it's all very informative. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to have you here. I, I enjoy listening to what you have to say. It makes all good sense. Well, that's what I hope to make sense. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is my patients are never guessing what I'm thinking because I think out loud. <laughs> They'll never. I mean, I might say something that, that's, you know, whatever it is, I tend to think out loud so there's no guessing. And invariably, the patients actually appreciate that. Yeah. And they actually say, wow, finally, somebody who actually listens. To that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like magic. All right. But I am at 884-9800 in North Cape May, 650 Town Bank Road, Suite 203 in North Cape May. Uh, Doc, it's good to have you here. And the, the website is proptrehab.com, right? Correct. Pro PT, and uh, I have it up here right now. All the testimonials are there. Yep. And all the information about the doctors there. And uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, two weeks, right? Uh, I believe so. I don't have the schedule in front yeah, of me. It's, a, it's just two weeks, okay. It's the, it's the uh, second and fourth Thursdays. Sure. At, you uh, got it. At 3 o'clock. I keep track of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my job. You know all those great words. I know how to keep track of time. Well, I have to let my uh, business manager wife uh, get, let me know of this information. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep I got too abreast. many other things to think about. North Cape May is 884-9800. Doc, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. All right, James, take us away. You're listening to Bob Burns in your afternoon on News Talk 1400 WOND.
If you have a back, neck, or limb pain or suffer from balance deficits, if you're about to have or recently had surgery, you already know you need physical therapy. But where do you go? Should you leave your rehab decisions to others or should you make your own informed decision? You have a right to choose the best place for your physical therapy. Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy is offering free consultations so you can compare what they have to offer with the rest. Before you get that total knee, hip, or shoulder replacement, before you choose where to go, get the facts. Pro-PT and Rehab Physical Therapy is located in North Cape May. They provide a warm, fun social atmosphere with no session time limits. Most insurances are accepted. For an appointment in Cape May or May's Landing, call 884-9800. That's 884-9800. Because it truly matters where to go for your physical therapy. They're simply the best. That's 884-9800. 884-9800. The proceeding has been a sponsored presentation of WOND.